Hi YouTube. This will be the first video in a series that I'm really excited to do. It's uh, I call it a closer look. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a closer look at a lot of semi-numismatic uh, bullion plays out there. I'd like to show you the designs. I'd like to show you the mintages. I'd like to discuss key dates. And I would like to discuss what the uh, coins are going for uh, from the primary bullion dealers as well as on the secondary market through sites like eBay. Um, I'd like to talk about what the future potentially holds for these series so that we can kind of make uh, have an idea uh, whether or not it's a good play in the future. Uh, some, of the, some of the ones that I'd like to talk about in the very near future, I'd like to discuss uh, Daniel Carr's rounds, um, the Somalia Elephant series, the Kookaburra series, the Koalas, and we'll go from there. Um, but th again, this is something that I'm pretty psyched to do. I chose the Lunar series first because honestly guys, this is my absolute favorite. I love the beauty of these coins. And not only that, they've proven to be a stellar investment um, year in and year out. And we'll kind of go over that whole thing. So let's start with uh, the designs here. I'll start cycling through them and then kind of talk over it. Um, this series started in 1999. Now, uh, the gold series actually started first in 1996. That was the first lunar series. And then they started in 1999 with the year of the rabbit. And uh, the mintage actually is 300,000. But you can see that originally they didn't even meet the uh, the original mintage numbers. Okay, something that is kind of a foreign concept today, as uh, the lunar series sells out every year, year in and year out. It's based, of course, off the Chinese zodiac. Now, one thing that really kind of tugs at me is I, I have uh, really fond childhood memories of you know going to a Chinese restaurant with my grandmother and and looking at the Chinese menu and, and just looking at the Chinese zodiac and uh, and seeing where I fell in and and whether or not the year the dog's personality traits kind of mirrored mine or not. Now this was the last uh, year of series one and then they began series two with the year of the mouse. Now the year of the mouse started in 2008 when the series one coins were still in production. So there was an interesting overlap here that we'll discuss and it kind of created a little bit of an anomaly there. Uh, the year of the ox, the year of the tiger, the rabbit, dragon. Now there's something really interesting I want to show you about the dragon. Uh, I'll show you that soon. But you know, people have a strong, uh, they're really drawn to the Chinese zodiac, okay? And they're, they're in particular their birth year. And that's pretty important coming up with the year of the horse and, and we'll kind of discuss that as well. So I, I came up with a spreadsheet that we'll take a look at here. And we'll of course zoom in. So what I did is um, I took all of the, uh, the prices at, uh, oops, let's uh, scroll up here a little bit. So I took the prices at um, Atmex at Gainesville, Provident, and eBay. So a lot of these coins are not in stock at those bullion dealers, okay? And for eBay, I took a sample size of t the last 10 sales. So that'll give you kind of an idea of what they're going for. Now, one thing that's great about this series is if you had focused exclusively on buying Perth Mint Lunar Series coins over the last, I mean, pick, pick a time frame, your investment would be performing extremely well for you. Okay, despite the ups and downs of the silver market, the collector's appeal of this series is very high. Now, there's a couple of the things I want to point out. Number one is, you can see right here, the original mintage of the year of the rabbit was 63,644. The next year, it almost doubled for the year of the dragon. Okay, 118,697. Now, the dragon is extremely important in Chinese culture. It's obviously a strong mythical animal, and you can see the very next year the mint has dropped right down again for the year of the snake. So that's an important anomaly to look at, especially as it relates to series two, and we'll get there in a moment. But you can see that even with the 300,000 um, mintage number, that we didn't even come close to hitting it until 2008 with the year of the mouse series two. Now the series two coins sell out every single year. Okay, and uh, it created, the overlap created an interesting opportunity. If you see the 2008 Year of the Mouse Series 1, 
as well as the Ox and the Tiger, those are very low mintage numbers. In fact, the year the Ox Series 1 is probably considered a key date because there's only 52,000 of these minted. It was the lowest mintage number of any of the lunar coins. Now when you look at the prices, one thing I want to point out really quickly here is you know how important the year the dragon is in Chinese culture and given that right now and it's not going to last long because there's only 865 available but at Gainesville coins right now the year the dragon coins is in the $39 range for uh, the one ounce bullion coin okay that is literally the lowest price anywhere right now except for the year the snake on, e on eBay that you can find any lunar coin right now. If you look at the prices of all the bullion dealers, if you look at the prices of eBay, that is the lowest price that you're going to find anywhere right now. I found that very interesting to see and of course once Gainesville sells out of those coins, I don't think you're going to see that price again. Um, I did put my money where my mouth is, I, I bought them myself. Um, the year, the, uh, the Series 1 coins sell for quite a bit. You can see uh, the original year of the Dragon is up to 130 at Atmex, uh, 94 at Gainesville, 120 at Provident. eBay, however, you can get those for around $79. I found that very interesting. Um, the year of the Ox Series 1, you can see that that sells pretty consistently across the board. 100 at Atmex, 110 at Gainesville, 105 at Provident, and 85 on eBay. And again, that was a uh, sample of the last 10 sales. Um, Going forward, the year the horse release is going to be very important this year. Okay, uh, you know, right now the Perth Mint is having internal discussions. I'm sure on what price point they should be looking at to release this coin, knowing that it's sure to be a sellout, um, knowing that the Perth Mint has kept the Lunar Series at 300,000. Okay, this is very important because a lot of the uh, semi numismatic releases are either minted to demand or they've been raising the mintage limits. Okay, The Kookaburra they raised to 500,000 and then last year they attempted a million although they ended up scaling that back to 500,000. Pandas they moved all the way up to 8 million. Um, the Somalia elephants are minted to demand. Okay, The koalas are minted to demand. The Lunar Series has stayed constant at 300,000. I think that makes that an outstanding investment. But again, it all depends on, on how the Perth Mint decides to price this particular series this year. Um, you know, any business that sees strong secondary market for their products usually wants to get that some of that performance and they, they kind of uh, put that into the original price. So I'm really hoping that they do the right thing and use a pricing structure similar to what uh, they used for the Year of the Snake last year. I remember when the Year of the Snake was first released, it was about spot plus $5 for a, a, um, a single uh, coin. So that, was, that wasn't too, too terrible. So um, if, if, they, if they use that pricing structure for the Year of the Horse, I will certainly be buying aggressively. Um, let me see what else here. Oh, the Year of the Tiger. So the Year of the Tiger is basically proof positive that even a modern release coin can do really well really quickly. Okay, you see that in 2010, the Series 2 sold for, uh, they sold out at 300000 and yet the Atmex price is $100 for that coin, Gainesville is $8501, Providence $6415, and eBay even is $65 per coin. Okay, that is outstanding performance in a, in a short period of time. Um, you know, with, with the year of the horse, one thing that appeals to me as well is 2002 was the year of the horse, okay? And what was 2002? 2002 was when we had a little mini baby boom after 9-11, uh, okay? So I think there's a lot of little uh, Year of the Horse fans coming of age here. And uh, I think they'll be aggressively going back and, and trying to get their, their birth year coin. Um, I know that my son is a 2002 kid, and uh, he absolutely adores the Year of the Horse. So I'm excited to see what the, the, uh, the release of the new coin brings. I'm excited for this series. It's something that I really enjoy, and uh, that's it. So, if you see anything on the spreadsheet that kind of stands out to you, I'd be I'd be interested to uh, to know what you think, and I'd like to know what your thoughts are on the uh, lunar series in general. Okay, guys, talk to you later.